Society. We are on tonight with the lovely Nicole Richardson once again. Hi. <sighs> the crowds go wild. Oh my gosh. I'm so, so excited to have you back. Thank you um, so yeah. much. So much. I'm sorry. I'm talking over you. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> excited. <laughs> I think we're fangirling on each other a little bit. Like, oh my That's, gosh, I'm so happy you're here. No, I'm so happy you're here. <laughs> I mean, there are worse things, right? Than fangirling a little bit over, like two women fangirling over each other. I will take that any day, right? Absolutely. Especially now yeah. that I know you're not going to steal my candy. Like, we could be real good friends. <laughs> That's a really good point. Like, if we both did Halloween trick-or-treating, we would split up the candy really well. That's a really right. good point. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yep, mm-hmm. we're going to be fine. <laughs> All right, we figured this out, y'all. We figured this out. We're going trick-or-treating in uh, October while well, there's going to be social distancing and it's probably going to be canceled. But we're not going to think about that right now. No, we're going to figure out how to incorporate um, really cute masks into our costumes. Into our costumes. Yeah, we can all just be like Sub-Zero and Power Rangers and Spider-Man and, you know, other doctors. Just go as a doctor, honor our heroes, and go as a doctor. Or that. Uh, that's not where my head went. One of my favorite comedians made a face mask. It's um, from uh, that guy from Tiger King who lost his teeth. It's just his, it's just his, his toothy smile. And it is the best. So you could also go as a redneck, I guess. You know, that'd be fun. <laughs> <laughs> you can be safe and creative at the same time. At the same time, if you the want. Same. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh my gosh, absolutely lovely. So Nicole, tell us a little bit about yourself. Give us a quick little introduction for all of Mixer to see and know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Hi, so I'm a licensed professional counselor supervisor and a licensed marriage and family therapist in the state of Texas. Um, I have a wonderful private practice that is now completely virtual. <laughs> um, I work Uh, primarily but not exclusively with people who are um, survivors of trauma, who are recovering from chemical dependence, and who I I lovingly refer to as uh, recovering perfectionists. I love working with recovering perfectionists. (laughs) Oh, I love that. Is that people with OCD? Is that or just Um, sometimes it's OCD, but a lot of times um, it's a lot of type A'ers. They're really hard on Ah. themselves. I wouldn't know anything about that either. I don't know what you're talking wouldn't. about. <laughs> no, not not at all. Um, so it can manifest in different ways. For some people, it's OCD. For some people, it's like anxiety. Um, but for a lot of type A'ers, it's this um, idea that I'm I'm never going to live up to this image or standard of perfection that just doesn't exist. Right, right, right. I'm not going to be myself because I'm not good enough. So I'm just going to try to be this perfect image. And then I'm going to beat myself up all day because I'm not that. That was a... Yeah, that's a thing. Yeah. Yeah, that was a thing that was very... I I think I would say like the first five years of my therapy were all about getting through that. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny how that works out, right? And then and then yeah. someday it like kind of clicks like, oh, oh, that's not possible at all i literally cannot be as perfect as i need myself to be at all times it is not it's not a standard for anybody (laughs) oh my gosh well so thank you so much for coming back you had uh emailed me and uh said hey what can i do for your community because covid's going on and people are anxious and i was like holy moly you're amazing come on over and let us bombard you with questions and you're like sign me up yeah. and uh let's see if you'll regret it right <laughs> so no, <we're> not. <laughs> uh everybody your questions go under exclamation the letter q and then post your question after that and i will try to get through the q as many for as many as possible um yeah and be sure like ask away this is a professional here to a- answer your questions if you've been nervous over how nervous you are right now now is the time to learn more about it so i do want to know how bad has it been so tell me how bad are all the crazies in your practice that's terrible (laughs) i can say it because it's me it's okay i can say it because it's me and i it's fine if i'm one of them i can make fun of myself but go ahead so you're asking how are my people (laughs) how are how are the human beings 
it doing in your practice currently? Um, the people in my practice are doing, yeah, I think it's a mixed bag. I think some people feel like, like one of my clients today, she works from home. She's in tech. Um, so she has kind of lovingly joked a little bit that for the most part, not a lot of her day-to-day stuff has changed. She misses going to cafes and she misses, right. um, you know, some, some small pleasures in life, but for the most part, like her day-to-day has not shifted around a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, Some of my other clients, unfortunately, have lost jobs. Um, People in the service industry, that kind of thing. It's a really scary time for some people. I have some clients that are first responders. um, And I think, I think especially for them, you know, their, their schedules are bananas. Um, Their families, I know they're worried about, you know, what am I going to bring home to my family? And I think, you know, it's hard for them to see day-to-day all the stuff we're hearing about on the news, but we're not seeing, um, <clears throat> you know, including, but not limited to, I, I have a family member, uh, a great uncle of mine passed away and he, he would have under any other circumstance would have passed away with a ton of family around him. He was a really lovely man. And, you know, the people that worked with him had to, had to be that comfort, had to be that sweetness um, and had to be that send off for him. And so I think a lot of people, especially in the healthcare industry right now are really, they're, they're not just heartbroken for their, themselves and they're not just afraid for themselves, but they're heartbroken for, for the people that can't be with their families and can't hold, hold their loved ones, especially when they're scared and especially when they're sad. Yeah. So I think for some of us, it's, it's harder than others. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, and being, they're further away from their loved ones and they're also, they're dealing with debt, death at a more consistent rate than ever, probably people in yeah. healthcare right now. Yeah. Death yeah. and fear because, because a lot of people are getting better, but while you're in the hospital on a ventilator and your family can't come hold your hand and, and kiss your forehead and say, I love you. It's going to be okay. Just even right. those, those, those teeny tiny things that it's okay for us to need and we all need um, people can't have. And that's gotta be heartbreaking too, because I've got 10 more patients down the hall. I can't hold your hand and kiss your forehead and tell you it's going to be okay. I got to go. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a bummer. Yeah. Ooh, it's heavy stuff, but it is important to (laughs) talk about. So I have noticed, and we were talking about this just before. I mean, yes, people are going through normal mood swings like like you do, you know, Monday sucks, Tuesdays, okay, a little bit better, Wednesday, oh my God, it's Friday. You know, everybody's going through the ups and downs of like life now that we've gotten into the habits of whatever they are. So I still work and I've been working from home. This is week seven for me. And it's become like, all right, this is working now. This is whatever it is. Um, so, and the over, but the overall feeling that I've been getting, the like, the general, the general feeling feel that I'm like the general energy I don't want to say the word energy but like yeah the general energy that I'm getting from the world right now is that people are feeling stir crazy people are done with isolation people are done being alone people are fed up they're tired Uh, a lot of people that I have talked to talk about being depressed and feeling more isolated than usual and craving that human contact that they're not getting and so Mm -hmm. like a are you seeing that b do you feel like that is happening like that is a normal for where we are in this process. I mean, I don't know how you could know that because we've never been in this process before, but yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Nail on head. Yes. Yeah. Um, Well, and, and I think too, just to add to that, you know, what's, what I think is normal. How are any of us supposed to know what's normal for us? How are any of us supposed to know how we're supposed to do this? We're not like, we were not, we were not socialized for this. We were not built for this. It is okay that you don't know how to do this and it's okay that it's freaking you out. That's right. That it'd be weirder if it wasn't, I think. Right. Right. Um, I think you're right. I think a lot of people are getting stir crazy. And I think for some people it's forcing them to either get a little creative. And I think unfortunately for some other people, they're starting to engage in maybe some risk taking behaviors that they maybe weren't engaging in at the beginning of quarantine at the beginning of all of this. So, you know, 
some people, like a, a friend of mine, this was the sweetest thing. I, I woke up on Easter morning and she had left a, an Easter basket on my front door Aww. and just took off, um, which was Aww. super sweet. Right. And um, not just because it had chocolate in it. <laughs> um, it was just really thoughtful and there was a funny card and what a nice way to connect, right? It was really, right. really, really thoughtful. Right. And I think she, and, and I don't think I'm the only person she did it for. So I think it was something fun for her to do and a way to connect with me and other people that are close to her that she can't physically be close to. Um, and it was wonderful to be on the receiving of, end of such a thoughtful, warm, and it was contact without contact. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I'm watching all of my neighbors. I mean, I've had conversations with neighbors that I never would have had six months ago. Oh, yeah. Neighbors. Today, yeah, I talked to a neighbor that was like, oh, my God, you have paper towels. Congratulations. That's literally <laughs> what she said. We were getting out of the car and we bought paper towels. And she's like, congrats, where'd you get them? And we, like, exchanged conversation about that. And yeah. who in the world would have ever said congrats on getting paper towels <laughs> like no. a year ago? six a year six months ago if that woman had said the same thing to you you would have been like oh my god okay (laughs) bye let's yeah yeah Yeah. and then you would have gone inside and told your partner don't talk to that lady she's nuts yeah (laughs) like it would have been so weird but instead it was a sweet exchange that you had with somebody you maybe never ever would have spoken to we never spoke because her dog always barks at me so I'm always just like ugh, this dog again yeah 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 So I'm I'm experiencing that a lot. I'm also watching, and I love this. I'm watching my neighbors sit in their front lawns and either their friends will come up and sit in the back of their cars or pull out folding chairs and kind of sit, not in the street, but in the street. And so they're still far enough away from each other, but they're close enough that I can see you without looking at a computer screen. I I can watch your body language. I can just be in the presence of another human being and that's wonderful so if people are getting stir crazy it's totally okay to do that stuff um but i you know when i hear about earlier today a client told me oh stores are going to start opening up like no they're not i mean maybe but are they supposed to Mm. yeah no don't count on it it's like a magic eight ball Mm. right right and then my dentist's office today sent me an email saying we guarantee we're gonna open on the 11th like no you can't actually you can't can't guarantee me that you want to open on the 11th and I want you to open on the 11th but you can't guarantee me that so let's let's say project we project (laughs) yeah we would like to would even be fine yeah we're crossing all our fingers and all our toes (laughs) um I think I think it's it comes down to a little bit of creativity and and a whole lot of patience patience that we have not ever had to have before at, at, at what a crazy increasingly rate we have, we are so accustomed to instant gratification yes. and this idea that, well, I don't like this anymore. I've been doing it for seven weeks and it's not yeah. fair, right? Yeah. It's not, yeah. it's totally not fair. Right. That doesn't mean that we have, to, that we, we can stop yet. Right. So it's going to force us to be a little bit more creative in order to get a completely normal, natural human need met right. and still follow the rules. Is, is it just because like we've been isolated for this long? Like, is there any, honestly, in, in my perspective, uh, it's, it's two-sided. On one hand, I'm like, yeah, I'm also done with this and I want to get out. On the other hand, I'm one of those people that's like, I would rather do the thing right the first time as long as possible and Mm -hmm. you know try to yeah just try to do it right the first time then keep redoing it and redoing it and redoing it because we keep messing it up and like I don't want to be stuck in my house in the middle of July right so I'd rather do it this now and then in July (laughs) maybe we'll have because of you know because this worked we'll have a little bit less of a risk when I go outside and again like sit on my lawn even and stuff like that. I think some of it's boredom. I think some of it's that we're losing patience. I also think a lot of it is the loss of autonomy. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. The loss of, of the freedom of will. I mean, that is, especially in our culture, that is one of our founding principles, right? right? That we are free. Right. We're the, the, the land, the home of the brave and the land of the free. We get right, to go right, right, do right. what we want. Right, do right, right. I do what I want. Right. I, 
I do what I want. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. If I want my cheesy poofs, I go get my cheesy poofs. And get your then- cheesy poofs. Or tell your mom to get your cheesy poofs. <laughs> That's right. Especially that. But I, th- I think that is a big, big part of it is that, you know, like you said, we, at first, all, all whether, whether it was fear or whether it was, okay, compliance, we were all kind of willing, or most of us at least, were willing to do it in the beginning. But after a while, it does start to wear on you that like, wait a minute, I'm losing more and more. Every day that goes by, there are more losses. And sometimes it's, maybe it's a death in the family. Maybe it's, maybe it was your wedding day. Maybe it was a vacation you would take. And it's, maybe it was your prom or your graduation. A lot of things to grieve. Yeah, your best friend's birthday party. And so every day we all lose something else. And every day we lose something else we wanted just this little I you know I, I want to go sit in a Starbucks <laughs> yeah I do dude I just want to go into a Target and I've been complaining about this to my community forever I just want to walk around a Target and buy crap I don't need buy yes. like the fourth set Much. of sheets that I don't need to buy because it's on clearance and it's only $12 <laughs> and they're normally 50 yeah I'm gonna walk out with those stupid sheets I don't need but I want to be able to do that right now I go online and I literally only buy like XYZ and that's if it's in stock <laughs> Yeah. <sighs> I want so a bagel. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. I want I want a bagel. I want to sit in a Starbucks with a book and be annoyed that the guy next to me is being too loud on the phone. Yeah. I want to go in public. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even really want to talk to that many people. I just want to be outside. I just want to be near a sea of bodies that are all yeah. breathing and heaving <laughs> next to me. I don't want them to talk to me because like no. ugh. No, but yeah. I, want, I want them near me. <laughs> right. And it's super normal. We're pack animals. It is, we all, we all crave being in our pack. So yeah, I, I, I totally hear the compliance fatigue and it's, and it's totally okay if you're feeling that way. And also, so it just, it, to me, what that means is we have to get more creative about how we're getting that need met. How can I be around people without actually being around people? you can still shop for garbage you don't need at Target. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. But I think I'm getting to the point where I'm just like, I'm tired of the alternatives. Like I've I've done all of the, like I've dropped a gift at my friend's house. I have, you know, talked to my sister over over phone and like I've done the alternatives and been like, wow, this is great. But then after a while, the alternatives start wearing on you too, where you're just like, I am really done with just not doing what I'm supposed like what I want to be doing and doing the second best thing to that yeah yeah Yeah. I'm done being good I I I, this isn't fair yeah yeah that's it that's it I'm the good kid in the class and all the other kids are ruining it for me because not the all them but there's two kids in the back and they keep talking and they won't shut up and that's why we're gonna have to sit through recess and I'm not about that life I'm the good kid (laughs) I know Right. I know, but we have, po- unfortunately, we can't put them on their own island and just be like, give it to each other. We're right. done now. <laughs> That's so terrible. Well, we, we did, we, we, the, uh, uh, the Brits tried that with Australia. It didn't work. It so didn't that, work. It's not a thing. We can't just send them off to their own island. Like, you don't behave during quarantine, you get shipped to the island. Honestly, I feel like a lot of people would be like, oh my gosh. There's a way sure. out. There, sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, Let's I'll go, go hang out on this island. Yeah. 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 You, all you got to do is walk into the Target. Uh, okay. <laughs> you're you're um, right. It, it's not. It's not fair. You're you're absolutely right. It's not fair, and it sucks. Yeah. It's a, uh, we have Australians in chat going. Should I be offended? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, so I did want to touch upon this question that a few people have brought up, and it's come up before. We have quite a few people in the community who live with disabilities and who haven't been able to leave the house, and this is status quo for them. And frankly, they're tired of all these able people complaining about being, you know, sitting home for seven days when, like, this has been their life, right? What, No matter what the disability is, whether you're immunocompromised or just mobility or whatever is going on, like, there is a certain kinship that I feel like people who are aware 
uh, should be feeling towards people who have disabilities who've been dealing with this to be able to say, oh, this is this is what you're going through and you've had to normalize this and be become okay with this. That must have been really hard for you. Like, that's what I want to see, but I don't know that that's going on. What do you what do you think? I, I think that's probably true. I think I think that's probably not going on. I mean, I think I think a lot of us are. Um, we're all pretty focused on our own BS. Mm. And so especially right now, most of us are lost in fear and stress and anxiety and our own grief and loss that I think it's probably true that a lot of us are not looking around going, oh, there are people who like, this is their normal. Huh? I mean, mm -hmm. I think, I think that's probably true. I think it's, I think those folks are probably feeling a little bit of like, I told you, right. this was not awesome. I this is not you. fun. Not a good time. No. <laughs> yeah. But nobody wanted to hear it back then. Um, yeah. And yeah, I, th I think, I think it's probably true that they're, they're not listening now either. Ugh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, but that's exactly like, hey, this is the normal for certain people. And I, uh, I also would like to see, you know, because we're talking about anxiety and and feeling anxiety during COVID, and a lot of people now are again, I feel like unaware that they're literally even experiencing anxiety. Like people have not put a name to this feeling of I feel out of control. I feel like I am very nervous all the time over something that I know I can't control. And I, it seems illogical, but I'm just nervous all the time and all mm -hmm. those other anxiety symptoms. And I would love for people to come out of this being like, oh, is that anxiety? Okay, okay. Okay, so you want people who work really hard to avoid their feelings to suddenly be self-aware and able to name and articulate their feelings? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why that's so much to ask for personally. All I'm saying is some self-awareness would be great. Somebody tweeted and it like blew up like crazy because it's so, again, I'm going to use it mind blowing to people that certain people do not have that inner monologue going in constantly and, and narrating everything that they're doing and how they feel about it and how they should feel about it and yada, 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 yada. Like some people just, I don't know, is it empty up there? Like, is it like a white noise machine where it's just like, like For what? Someone, yeah, isn't that, a, like, but doesn't that sound kind of glorious? To someone whose mind never shuts off, doesn't yeah. that sound in some ways like a beautiful, beautiful gift? Yes, to just but also like, punishment. <laughs> no, I think that sounds like freedom. Yeah. The idea of, being able to just kind of be, have everything be that simple and clear. And yeah. I work really hard with meditation to get that for a few oh seconds. Oh my God. Yes. Yes. If someone, if I could attain that for minutes, if not hours, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm totes jelly. Yeah. I wish yeah. I could do it. Yeah, I mean, I, I get that. I think there are a lot of anxiety for people, whether they recognize it or not. There's just a lot of unknowns and a lot of things out of control. And it's for, uh, it's a lot for someone, even if you don't deal with anxiety on the daily. I'm saying that that is feeling anxious and people cannot comprehend that that is what anxiety is. And so some people might be connecting the dots and be like, I was, so my, my husband has a uh, panic disorder. And I was like, is this what it's like to be in your head? Because I have anxiety too, but his is like, you know, next level, right? So uh, I was like, is this what it's like to be in your head? And he's like, yes, but I didn't want everybody to have this to in order to understand. <laughs> like, that wasn't <laughs> the goal. I just wanted people to be like nicer about it, but I didn't want people to have it in order to get there. But that's where we are. Well, and kind of like your, your, uh, your other viewers have pointed out like hey i've been i've been at home a lot y'all didn't think what this was like you didn't you didn't notice when i said it before um i think a lot of times it takes it takes either someone really being intentional and imagining themselves in our shoes before they can truly be empathetic or it takes something happening to them unfortunately before they go oh yeah I didn't like that at all. You must hate it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's an interesting way to put it. Too. I mean, it's it's. 
I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that your husband is not patient G zero and he isn't the one who's been running around coughing on everybody. So he, he didn't do this to us. Like he didn't, he didn't, it is not his fault. <laughs> and so, yay, more people understand what he's going through. Yeah. An yeah. opportunity for, for more grace and more empathy. Yeah. I would, yeah, I hope so. But uh, again, one of my moderators is saying true, but it's unsettling when you're needing to adapt to a brand new thing every day. And that is, that is the bottom line. Even the most neurotypical person is, you know, mm -hmm. having issues being like, okay, what happens today? Oh, great. A billion more people, bajillion more people died. I don't know how many people die a day because I'm trying to shield myself from it, but Dude. yeah. 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 And she's right. I think, I think you said it was a she, right? Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. Bryce. Bryce. Yeah. She's, she's absolutely right. <clears throat> the, the worst part for me, the first two weeks was, okay, what, what, am, what new normal am I going to wake up to? And I, I really had a, I had a difficult time sleeping the first couple of weeks through this because I, I, I really kept wondering like, what's the new awful thing that's going to happen today? What's the new thing I have to adjust to? And I, I think that's true. I think a lot of bad stuff has happened at this point and not that it couldn't get worse. Of course it could. <laughs> um, because I certainly never thought we would get here if I'm honest. Right. Um, but that said, we are also, for as many crummy or shitty things that are happening, there are also some really neat things that are happening. You know, for, for every every sad day we can look around and watch our neighbors like your neighbor being like oh you found uh um paper towels where did you get those and you can have this nice exchange with a stranger i one of my neighbors the they've got little kids and they put they made the cutest posters one said i can't wait to hug you and every day i go by that it makes me want to cry and the other one says we miss you and i know that it isn't to me because i've never met those children but I love seeing that every day. It, it gives me the feels every time I walk by their house. It is so lovely to see. And for all the, the, the horrible things that are happening every day, there are sweet things that are happening too. And it's really easy to overlook the good things that are happening and get stuck on the shit sandwich that you have to eat every day. Yeah. I think that's another like part of this wave that I'm personally on where I felt like, okay, I've done. I looked at the bright side. Yep. Still, still looking for the bright side. Oh, there's the bright side again. Yep. I, but I'm like starting to like the, the bright side, it now feels like this like really foggy mirror and I'm slowly, slowly defogging like all the brightness and positive stuff that I've been throwing out there. Like we literally, we literally had an uplift-a-thon last week where 15 people came on and shared positive, good things from their communities. Like it was awesome. We raised money, it was super hype. Everybody was very excited. Like I did the positive thing, right? And now I'm starting to be like, ah, this positive stuff is wearing off and I'm not starting to see the crap behind it. I don't like it, any more positive <laughs> things. But yeah. yeah, but there's definitely a feeling of like, I, I, like a positive fatigue too, but then the stuff behind it is shit. So I don't want to be looking at that either. So, it, so particularly when our brains are in a, a, a state of hyper arousal and stress, we are super sensitive to um, threats, to danger, to fear. So right now in particular, because we're all a bit hyper aroused, everything we take in that's negative is it probably needs five positive things to balance right. it out that's a good point that's a very good point so you're right there's lots of not good stuff to go around you're absolutely right and it one of my uh, favorite songs is easy and the the chorus goes something like it's easy to bitch easy to moan it's harder to work harder to try hard to be glad to be alive it is actually on a good day when we're not in quarantine and there is not a global pandemic happening on a good day it takes work to be happy on a good day you have to put energy into having a life that you are happy to live on a good day 
and yeah. we are having to create good days. We are having to almost force good days right now because we're scared. And that's okay, normal, and every day is not going to be a good day. You cannot force a good day every day. But at some point, it becomes at least part of our job to wake up and try to be mindful and try to be intentional. And I'm not asking anybody, anybody, to wake up and pretend, but at least wake up and be balanced. Yes, I am not going to get my way on everything today. Yes, I'm going to be isolated and lonely, and I'm going to miss a thousand people whose faces I wish I could see, even if I didn't have to actually talk to them like the people at Starbucks. Yes, and also, there are things in my life I get to be grateful for. I have not lost everything. I have lost some stuff. I have lost some experiences. I have lost some time with loved ones, but I haven't lost everything, and I get to try again tomorrow. And sometimes that's all we can do. I love that. Oh my God, I'm going to tattoo that whole, I think that was two minutes. I'm going to tattoo that whole thing on my body. Does that sound good? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sounds itty, legit. Itty, 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 itty bitty letters. Uh, interesting question. All right, you guys, don't forget exclamation letter Q to ask your questions. Uh, Cause I'm, it's hard for me to keep track of chat if we, if you guys don't have them. Uh, if you if you guys don't have them um, in the in the queue, uh, but there have been rumors that people with anxiety. I've read these articles that people with anxiety are actually dealing with this better because they're kind of like, yeah, I got this. This is status quo. This is cool. Everything's fine. Yeah. Any well, thoughts on that? I feel like people that have been in treatment for anxiety. I will also say people that have been in treatment for particularly um, childhood trauma. Mm -hmm. <laughs> are probably the best equipped for this because they're the ones who've been seeking daily tools for this for a, a while or at least a period of time but particularly survivor survivors of childhood trauma uh yeah the world's unsafe duh right so you're so you're new here <laughs> oh so you're new here let me explain to you how this works people are terrible <laughs> yeah Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. People but what about off. just that that sense of like anxiety that people live with? Like if I live with a sense of dread all the time, having a little bit more dread is, I don't know, here, a little bit of dread here, a little bit of dread here. It's all the same. It balances out. Yeah. A little bit of dread, a little bit of, um, I don't want to use the word pessimism, but I can't really think of a better word. But mm. there, I, I feel like a lot of folks that have, especially those that have gotten treatment for, for anxiety, they've been working on skills for how to overcome the oh, how am i gonna do this oh, um right. a lot longer than maybe your average bear so yeah that makes sense yeah yeah there's been a there's been an odd i don't want to sound i do feel like i am sounding more pessimistic today like again last week i was like full-on kermit the frog like oh my god yeah it's gonna be great <laughs> So I think I'm like trying to maybe even subconsciously like balance it out. Uh, but yeah, so today has been definitely a more like I'm cranky with all of this and I'm getting that sentiment from a lot of people. Whereas last week it was like, we're going to make the best of this, guys. It's coming to an end soon. Any moment now. Any <laughs> moment now. Here yeah. it comes. Yeah. Well, and I think that's normal. Expect Expect it to come and go in waves. Expect expect the stress to come in waves expect mm -hmm. the the suffering the amount of suffering the amount of fear expect it to come in waves and just like just like a wave right it'll it'll come and crash at your feet and then it'll recede a little bit and you'll think eh and then it'll come right back <laughs> mm -hmm. eh? and every time you'll 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 be better for it um again, i don't even want to talk about how long i think this will last cuz i'm hoping it'll be over tomorrow maybe maybe it'll be over tomorrow i just wake um, up and it was all a bad dream it was, it was a bad a movie i watched yeah i do i do have some pretty bad dreams so maybe this is just a really awful dream or i just deal with what i have in front of me what is yeah. today and yeah. what can i get out of today what can i get right. for myself today if today is just gonna be a shit sandwich today's just gonna be a shit sandwich <laughs> Then that's the sandwich it is, y'all. That is the sandwich it is. Are there chips? 
<laughs> Wait, do you put chips in your sandwich really quick? Sometimes. I haven't done it in a long time, but yeah. I, I haven't done it because I have taken to um, toasting my bread for all sandwiches because they should all be toasted. And if they're not, then then you maybe consider putting the chips in there. Do you put chips okay. in your sandwich? I think don't think I've done it since like college, but I definitely that used to be a habit of mine, like consistently. <sighs> Oh, lays are the best because there's not too much flavor. There's the salt, mm -hmm. and then you mm -hmm. got the right texture. But if you, if you, um, if you what the call it the bread, then you mm -hmm. then you get the crunch without the added uh, carbs and sugar and salt. <laughs> the what to call it is toasting. I think she's saying toasting. toasting. We got it. I'm saying <laughs> we got it. We got it. Oh my gosh. Okay, we're gonna go to questions because we have a few. We have a cool. few. Yay! Okay, so question. Any moment now, Em, any moment you want to open that queue. Okay, <clears throat> question number one comes from viewer Ella the Unmighty, and she asks, do you have any tips for fostering a budding uh, relationship? I'm not really sure, some kind of a social connection during this time of social distancing. I want to spend all of my time with them and cuddle with them and hold their hand, but I can't. Oh, this one is so hard. I, I know that virtual, virtual is great in the very, very beginning. And then you do want that tactile. You want to just have that ease of like snuggling up on the couch and the hand holding and all that mm -hmm. good stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't blame you for wanting it. And I think here again, there's an opportunity for us to be really creative. Um, what, could you do instead? I, I assume that they live in a reasonable distance. Uh, and I'm also assuming that they're already doing all the virtual stuff that they can do. Um, you know, there are sweet things you can do. You can leave a little present on the door. You can, I'm, I'm assuming she's already tried this, but going over things like just being around someone. So I feel like that's one of the things that we're missing the most with FaceTiming and Zooming and Google Hangouts and 80 other platforms that you can see someone <laughs> and right. talk to them. But a lot of times what we're missing is just that sort of passive, you're in the room and I'm in the room time together. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Can you just, maybe you're reading and he's cooking or maybe you're um, doing a craft project while he's, I don't know, standing on his head, <laughs> whatever it is that he does. Sure. Um, or she, I don't know. Um, and I think that's something we can try. You could also try being distant, but seeing each other, if you can handle that, right? Can mm. you, can you sit in your driveway with him six feet apart and just be in each other's presence? And how, mm. how would that feel? Now, if you don't have the self-control for that, obviously don't do it. Um, but that, that is something that a lot of us are really, truly missing. Um, either because we are far away from our partners or loved ones, um, or, or because we're dating and it's just really difficult. I, I am sorry that you're going through that and there is not an easy or simple solution. We unfortunately are gonna be deprived of that human contact and that is not cool and it's not fair. I think some people just need to literally hear that, right? Just, uh, it's not fair. It's, it's not, it's okay that you think that it's not fair because it really isn't. There's nothing we can do about it right now, but it's okay to acknowledge the fact that like this sucks. Yes. Yeah. Cause it does. That's yeah. accurate. Yeah. There's a, there's definitely like a line though to teeter of like, you don't want to acknowledge this sucks too much, but you don't want to not acknowledge this sucks. And yeah, there's a, I always feel like I'm teetering that line. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry. No, no, I, I'm agreeing with you. you. You don't, you don't want to lean into it. And where is that? Where is that line? And I think it's hard for us to know when we're in it sometimes is what is the line between me leaning into it versus acknowledging it. And that is really, really, it, there's not a perfect litmus test for that. Mm -hmm. It is really tricky. Um, you know, something I guess you could consider as well, if you guys are similarly quarantined, you know, do we want to quarantine or social distance together? Um, yeah. I have, I have watched some people do that. If you can do that responsibly, um, if you are equally staying away from, you know, other friends and family and you're staying out of public, I mean, that's something that you can consider. That's what I've heard. That's what I've seen people do where like couples that are dating 
will keep in quarantine and then meet up on the weekend, but they're in quarantine separately all the time. So it's like, it's okay. It makes sense. But mm -hmm. yeah, that's it's, scary. It's, it is scary. And, and of course, I, I don't know this person's situation, but I'm always a little nervous about like, like stranger danger. I yeah. like degrees of separation heard mm. about someone that was go meeting people that she was meeting on an app um, in the park at night. And that oh, was yikes. Like yeah, yeah. Zoinks. Um, <laughs> not, not a good idea. Not a good idea. So, so I'm not saying that everyone on the internet that you meet is bad at all. Right. right. But just make good choices. Please be safe. Yeah. That is, that is just one of those, uh, that's just, yeah, it's a, it's, that's lining up bad things, potential for bad things. That, that's all. Like, you, yeah, you just want to be cautious enough without being like, I'm literally inviting the worst to happen. Yes. You know, not that I would blame some, somebody if the, if something terrible did happen to them, I wouldn't blame no, them, ne but, ne but. Never, yeah. but also make good choices, stay safe. <laughs> make good choices, says mom. Mom yes. Nicole says make good choices. Uh, okay, oh my gosh. <laughs> Bring a jacket. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, we have so many questions. Okay, Ella says, uh oh okay wait uh ella asked another question great it's in the queue okay all good all good we'll come back around to that one but thank you thank you so much for asking that question and thank you for answering it nicole okay yeah. let us see our next question comes from gunslinger kelly uh me never dealing with diagnosed anxiety by my for myself is there anything i can do to help my friends during this time who have a harder time dealing with it yeah. Um, listen. Hmm. That's the same advice you listen, lady. That's the same advice you gave last time. I need <laughs> fresh stuff. Here. No, but seriously, oh, it is no, just listen. Just it's different. different. It's quarantine time. It's different. It's not. It's well, <laughs> just yeah, listen. Yeah. What? Why is it different? Why is it different? That that would be my question. It's like, okay, is it different though? Um. And, and I think to, to offer, I don't want to say to offer solutions or counterbalances to it. I don't want to say that. What I would say is, and I think, I think sometimes what happens, especially right now, is the caretaker folks get extra fatigued right now, which is normal. Mm -hmm. um, it's okay if you're overwhelmed I think that's the nice way of saying it um by some of your friends that are a little bit more anxious and it's okay if you're tired of hearing it it's okay um you can invite them to do something else with you um I'm I'm loving all these games that are popping up online and I'm mm -hmm. loving watching people play like get creative on how to play games with people um remotely or virtually last Friday night I went to a virtual trivia night um and had to end early to go to bed and drink more water Mm -hmm. um but i i was surprised i don't actually really love trivia that much and i was surprised how much i enjoyed it but having yeah. something to do can also help excuse me people who are natural caregivers it gives them something else to talk to you about when you're really mm -hmm. anxious mm -hmm. um and it gives the anxious person something else to focus on so i think if i had to say you know what are what are one or two things i would do with someone who's naturally anxious I would listen and I don't want to say redirect because that feels very parenty, but I would also say, Oh, there's this thing we could do. And I think it'd be really fun. And I, I really want to try it and just, just help them see something else, put something else in front of them that they can focus on other than what, whatever's freaking them out right that minute. Right, 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 right. Okay. All right. Next question comes from Talis. Society seems to be get super. Uh, oh, just before I. Sorry, 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 everybody. But before I get to the next point, it's actually interesting. There are people that I'm hanging out with now that I didn't have the opportunity or go out of my way to hang out with in a while. Uh, like we had like a cousin's game night with my husband. What? Like we hadn't hung out with these people in a while because we normally saw them like Easter, Thanksgiving. And mm -hmm. we would never make time to see each other outside of that. So it was really cool to be like, hey, let's all make time to see each other since we have the time to see each other. It was it was really neat. Yeah. Very sweet. Yeah. 
Uh, okay, now tell us this question. Society seemed to get super communal recently. Everyone is helping everyone else, rooting for the healthcare worker, sharing all the positive hype and we're in this together thing. At what point does that start to get old and people will start to pull apart from the social togetherness once again and look after their number one? Hey. Okay, um, so <laughs> I am not over the social to togetherness thing. I am over the commercialization of the social togetherness thing. Ah, uh, yes. I almost yelled on Sunday night. I wanted to watch an hour of trashy television before I got in bed and read for a little while. And it, I, I'm gonna put my hands. Mm. I, every, almost every single commercial was about, we're in this together. And it felt so phony, first of all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I felt so much like, you know what? I wanted to not think about this for an hour. Can you give me one hour? Just one. One hour. I wanted an hour ugh, of awake time when I'm not thinking about this. So I think there's an element, at least for me, there's an element of like, ugh, with the community thing. And that doesn't mean I don't want to be in the community. It's the, it's the commercialization of, of us being banding together as a community. Yeah. But I have said from the the beginning of all this that quarantine and the global pandemic and everything going on around us, the, the, the market crashing and all of it, it's going to bring out the best of us and the worst in us. And we're going to see that on a personal level. I have, I have definitely felt my patience wearing through a lot more frequently than it normally does. Mm. Um, I have felt a lot more frustration and sadness and anxiety than I normally do. Mm -hmm. So I don't feel like it has brought out the best in me every day. And it has been a lot of work to, to manage all that. I have also really had to manage um, not clapping back at somebody when I'm like, there was a guy, there's an elderly man in the grocery store on Sunday who would not stop getting super close to me. And I, oh, I no, gave no, no, him no. like the, Oh, you don't, you don't want to mess with me look i don't think he saw but i really like i had to like rein it in because there was part of me that was like dude i'm i'm gonna be fine if i get sick you are not you right. are old Back you up are up. old sir <laughs> yes this is for you i i am wearing this mask for you stop back up it's true. So it's true. There, there's an element in all of us that is that is really sort of at war. It's the best of us and the worst of us, and we're we're seeing that even bigger than that. We're seeing some companies. I I won't name names, but there are some companies locally that I feel like are absolutely taking advantage of people's fear, and they're capitalizing on it. They're making money off of people being afraid, and that's disgusting. Um, but I feel like there are just as many people who are trying to do the right thing. And there's, there's several restaurants who from the beginning never did takeout. They were like, we don't, we don't want to expose our employees. We don't want to. Ex yeah. Uh, One of my favorite Chinese food places literally just shut down and was like, Hey, our employees, like, this is great and everything, but our employees also have kids at home that they need to take care of. And we're not going to force them to come into work when they're nervous as everything during this. And I, I was like, this is why I pay you money every week to get me beef and broccoli. Like, <laughs> yeah. But I think, I think there's some, I think there's, there's examples of people trying to do the right thing. There's people, there are examples of people uh, trying to not do the right thing or for, for their yeah. own for their own individualistic reasons. I'm watching people politicize um, right. what's going on. And that that often feels like they're doing it for their own gain instead of for, you know, what they really think is the most right thing to do. So, I mean, I think from the beginning and, and through the end, even when this is over. So I, I, I've been saying this for a long time too. We are going to be able to Monday morning quarterback this for millennia to come. Oh, but yeah. right now, all we can do is what is is the best thing right in front of us. Uh, one of the other questions was about like, how am I supposed to adjust when every day is a little bit different? And the truth is every day, every day you have to just wake up and adjust. try. Yeah. And, it, and, and, and it, it's not fair and it does suck, but that is the best any of us can do because it is going to keep changing. That's, that's fair. And all I can do is my part. All you can do is your part. Hmm. Hmm. 
It was really interesting. Bliffle Splick brought up the point that uh, it does feel very much like, hey, instead of paying for this commercial you're making me watch, why don't you pay your employees and not for low them and stuff? So that's, yeah, that's a frustration I also feel like. But I'm that's- also, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, no, yeah, I was, I cut you off, my bad. Uh, no, I'm, I'm also kind of taking notes in my head. I'm like, not going to shop here anymore. Not going to shop. This is who doesn't care about their employees. This is who took care of their employees. This is where I want to invest my money. And this is where, like, this is somebody who pushed their people when it was on. Like, there's a lot of retail clothing companies that I'm like, oh, you thought you were essential. You're off my list now. Sorry. Yeah. Right. Sorry, not yeah. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I will say it cuts both ways. And, and again, we, we're going to be able to armchair quarterback this for a very long time from now. I mean, I think, you know, I, again, I've got, I have clients that are or were in the service industry who either no longer have jobs or went from 40 hour a week jobs to eight hours a, a month. Right, right. And I think there are some restaurants who are kind of like, look, we'll give everybody the option. Just as an example, we'll give everybody the option, but we don't we don't want to take away people's livelihoods. Right. And, and, you know, it's, it's great that now there are, there's, you know, more, <clears throat> more government funding and stuff like that for people to apply for right, right. Um, aid and that, that kind of stuff. But I think, especially in the beginning, <clears throat> I, I, I wasn't hating on people that were trying to give people the opportunity to support themselves. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, th- things look a little bit differently now. So hopefully they actually have choices now. Um, and some do, some don't, but I, I I'm, I'm wanting to sit back and, and watch, like you said, how, how are companies treating their employees and, and, but, but watch it with curiosity, right? Like mm-hmm. how are, are, do you get a choice or is it you do this or else? Right, 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 right. No, totally, totally. And I'm sorry, I'm kind of playing devil's advocate for you tonight more so than last time, but uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Well, and, and again, we're, this is, this is a whole new world, but not in a fun way. So mm-hmm. we're all, we all have to kind of figure it out for ourselves. Yeah. It's okay if you totally agree with me. <laughs> People don't have to agree with you for you to be right. That is so true. That's Thank true. you for the reminder. Thank you're you. <laughs> you're welcome. Hair flip, you're welcome. Okay. Okay. Oh my gosh. All right. Next question. Uh, one more from Ella the Unmighty. Uh, how do you navigate boundaries when they're conflicting? I volunteer with the ambulance and it's something I need to do for my mental health, but I live with my parents and they want me to stop during COVID because I might bring something home. There doesn't seem to be a middle ground. Oh, that is really hard. That's, that's super, super hard. And I'm assuming, I'm assuming, I'm assuming that Ella doesn't have another place that she can shelter in place while she does that. Um, now when you said volunteers with an ambulance, Right. Yes. Yes. Is that uh, there, or- there. If that, if it helps, the colloquialism might be because they're Australian, so there might be a little. But yeah, volunteer. They, pro- they're probably like a first responder volunteer. That's okay. Yeah. Well, and and that's that's really hard too because right now we we are just so heavily relying on our on our our first responders. Um, right now, violence is up. Domestic domestic violence is up. Um, you know, maybe car crashes are down, but like there we we just so need our first responders that is really really difficult um i don't know if there's a middle ground and i don't know if she it sounds like just from the phrasing of the question it doesn't sound like it feels like an option to her like this is something that's really important um to her and it sounds like it's really important to her community so i completely understand why she feels conflicted um and my assumption too is that if she's volunteering with an ambulance she's also got all the safety equipment that is available so i'm wondering if there's even a way that she can sort of section off her house what one of my clients did she works at a shelter um and what what one of what she did was she kind of said i will not go into the shared space in the house Mm -hmm. without the following protocols Mm -hmm. and she wouldn't go into the shared spaces in, in the house when her, her family was in there until she stopped, she, she eventually did stop working at the, the shelter. But I'm wondering if that's not um, maybe a way to navigate it. Um, you know, if she can do this and have privacy, like to strip down at the end of her 
shift maybe in, in the garage or the very edge of the house and put those clothes immediately in the washing machine and then immediately bathe and then disinfect anything, any surface that she touched, um, maybe staying out of the living room and the, um, the kitchen because those are just places that we naturally right, kind of, right, right. We do a lot of touching and sneezing and breathing in those places. Um, that, that would be a huge sacrifice for her, um, to take her meals in her bedroom and that kind of thing. But if it's really that important to her, maybe that's something that she would be willing to consider doing or, or something along those lines to help give yeah. her parents. Cause I also, I mean, I imagine, I don't know how old your parents are, Ella, but if they've got if they've got elevated risk because of health concerns or their age, I can also understand why they would be nervous to, um, to, to have you doing that job, not just for your own safety, Ella, but also for theirs. Like what, what you might accidentally bring home might be making them nervous. Right. Right. And I, I mean, I kind of feel like I can answer this as somebody again, who's lived with somebody with anxiety and, and that is tied to germs and everything. Uh, you kind of, you make an agreement, you go, this is as far, this is what I'm willing to do. And this is what I can do to make sure you're comfortable. I can't do anything past that because like now that would hinder on my ability to continue living. Like I cannot be live in the fear that you live in, but I can take the following steps. Look, I will wash my hands and make sure that maybe you see that I wash my hands and use a separate towel. And like those kinds of things, you could probably come to like a middle ground with what uh, everybody is comfortable with doing some sort of protocol that everybody yeah. could agree to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like, would you be comfortable if I came home stripped, like you said, stripped down, changed out, immediately went to the shower and then came out and then only talked to you Would that help? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We have four more questions and then we will let you go, but I don't want to, but we will. Uh, <laughs> uh, Ruma Key asks, as an res extrovert restaurant worker, I moved states a week before the quarantine. As such, Ooh. I didn't have the chance to make any friends and have been alone and in my own head for over a month. Any tips on how to survive with forced introvertism? Oh, that burns. Yeah, Ooh. that's me. <laughs> Not the moving part, but forced that introvertism. Is <laughs> and I'm the opposite. Um, I am the, the first two weeks of this, I was like, yay, I am home and I don't have to go anywhere. Nobody expects me to do anything. This is rad. Um, it took, it took a little bit longer for me to start missing humans. <laughs> um, I think that for, oh, that sucks. I'm sorry. Um, I think for you, what I would say is first, I would start by walking my neighborhood, even if it's three times a day and start meeting your neighbors. Um, obviously social distance and all that good stuff, but hi, I'm, I'm sorry. What was the person's name? Rumiki. Hi, Ru hi. I'm maybe, maybe that's your name. Uh, Rumiki. Um, <laughs> I just moved in right before all this happened. Um, and just start to get to know your neighbors that way. And I would schedule as many as my friends and family <laughs> will allow me to, um, as many zooms, as many FaceTimes, all that stuff. So you can start to, or you can continue to cultivate the relationships you had from wherever you moved from, um, as well as um, some new ones. I would also try to seek out some new virtual stuff. So, I mean, you're here, so you're obviously well-versed. Right, right, virtual. right. I would encourage you to maybe even try to find some new ones because you are not, you are not the only extrovert who has now been taken out of their habitat right. yes right. um so you, you're you're definitely in good company and there's lots of you out there uh, there's a guy at my gym who is kind of going around everybody and <laughs> being like hey do you want to go for a walk hey do you want to facetime hey like he's 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 working the gym hard i have to imagine that he's working his other social networks as hard as he can <laughs> poor guy because he's also an extrovert and just cannot can't can't stay at home by himself anymore yeah yeah I, I that's connecting with other extroverts and commiserating for a second not dwelling in it but commiserating for a second has been a godsend to me as well but yeah watching streams has been big because you feel that through live streaming you feel that social connection that you really can't get in any other medium the same way 
Uh, so Wild Spice is asking a question that's a little bit of a repeat. Uh, I think she wasn't here when we asked answered the first one. But um, if there's anything that you have to add or, yeah. Uh, but how can you best handle being apart from your significant other? My fiance is in New Jersey and I'm in PA and it's been over a month and a half since we've seen each other. We FaceTime and such, but it's still rough. That is rough. It is rough. And and we, we did kind of talk about this earlier. Mm -hmm. um, even, even, so one of my favorite things is even running um, FaceTime or whatever video platform that you have when you're not just sitting and talking to each other, because we so often miss that, that nothing time together, that just being around each other time. Mm -hmm. um, for people that are already in a relationship, the other thing I have been kind of gently challenging people with is if you're sheltering in place and your partner is sheltering in place, is it possible for you to shelter in the same place? Right, right. Uh, so, unfortunately, they're not. I know the, the, a little bit of background because I know this person, but unfortunately, they're not in that position because one of them is consistently being exposed and the other one is able to, sh to stay home. Yeah, so it sucks. Okay, so then, yeah. so then no. <laughs> um, well, it, but that for some couples, that has been possible where, okay, if I'm working from home in Colorado and you're working from home in blah, 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 um, if we're both working from home and we're not being exposed, why don't we work from home in the same home? Um, and, and I think that that's working for some people and for other people to do that. Um, that's the other thing is, you know, for some, for some people, um, especially when there's more stress, um, I, I have a client whose partner is a physician and obviously has to keep going to work. And um, they actually talked about maybe we should sell shelter in separate places because the physician was worried about, I don't know what I'm going to bring home to you. I can't right. know. Right. And I don't know how bad this is going to get or how long it's going to be. And ultimately they decided to, to shelter in the same place. But um, that that is really hard for, for a lot of couples right now is, is what does that dilemma look like? Especially if your partner or, or family member that lives in, in the home has uh, one of the elevated risk factors, right? Uh, an immuno, uh, a compromised immune system, um, elderly, that kind of thing. It's, it's, it's not cut and dry at all. So I, I, I'm sorry. I know that you missed that person. Um, I, my guess is if you guys are engaged, you also know that person's love language pretty well. Um, and if that person is continuously being exposed, I, I would encourage you to, to show them, to show up for them as best you can right now, to show them how much you love them as best you can right now. Um, and all those little ways, right? If it's words of affirmation, then just smearing it all over him. If it's acts of service, if, if it's touch, that's going to suck. Um, but there, uh, what's the other one? Gift giving and quality time. We can still give each other quality time. Um, it's going to look different than it used to, um, but, but we can still give that. Right, right. I mean, yeah, just... <laughs> Do whatever you can, man. Hang no. in there. Hang in there. I, I have said several times to my husband, I'm like, I am so, so grateful. I, I mean, I try to be grateful for him many times, but like now is the time where it's really important to turn in and, and be grateful for whatever moments you had. And I actually saw, and I know this person is a Disney nerd, so they'll get it, but I actually saw a couple who were together watching. You can go on YouTube and you can watch a loop of the same video that they show if you stay in a Disney hotel room that's like, the di park hours are this long today and this park is open for this long today. And then like Disney music plays in the background. So they put that up on YouTube, Disney did. So you can like put that on and watch it together and be like, oh, it's just like we're in the hotel room in Disney. We're gonna leave any moment now, any moment now. <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming then that when Disney posted that they didn't say, we're closed it's the yeah. park hours that are from nine to seven yeah whatever. yeah no that's what it's yeah it doesn't it doesn't say we're closed forever and ever <laughs> can you imagine just happy disney music looping and it's just like there's a big x across the screen <laughs> yeah. there's like a stamp of the word closed across the hours <laughs> <laughs> that's so dark that's so dark oh. but true oh my gosh uh that's all right cute. 
Two more questions <laughs> that should be pretty quick. Uh, Gunslinger Kelly asks, why is it that when we are forbidden to do something, we want to do it more? In this instance, visiting friends and family. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think there's a rebellious teenager in all of us, right? And yeah. and again, even culturally, we we are the the land of the free and the home of the brave. We we are raised being told you can do anything you want to do. Yeah, why don't you do that? And yeah. so there is a little part of I think a little part of all of us where I'm gonna I'm an adult now. I can do what I want. You can't tell me what to do. And I I that that's super true for me. As soon as someone tells me I can't do something, I want to be like, oh, watch me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't tell me what to do. I'm, uh, I am, I am absolutely. There is, there is a real teenager that lives inside of me that goes. <laughs> that's what you yeah. think. Yeah, <laughs> especially if that's the case. So yeah, yeah. there you go. That's a, that's a, that's a good one. Um, next question, last question. Taitu Magatsu asks, "How has your life been as a counselor during this time? Mine has been mm. losing work to social isolation. It really sucks because you guys fulfill such an important role, especially right now." Thank you. Um, you know, I, I think the first, I think the first three or four weeks, lots of friends and family, and it was always well-meaning. And I think even clients were saying, oh, you must be so busy. And what's funny is actually, no, uh, me and most of my, my other colleagues in private practice felt a dip um, in That's business for a hundred different reasons. Um, some of my clients don't have privacy at home. Some of them don't have reliable internet connections. Some of them have lost their livelihoods. Um, there's just, there's so many different reasons for that. Um, so that's, that's been weird. It's not, it's not been enough that I'm, I'm worried. Um, so I, I'm definitely still very grateful that I have a job and I do still have a job. Um, but it, it, it definitely, at first I was like, <gasps> what's going to happen next? Um, and I, after a while I was like, okay, please stop asking me this. <laughs> no, I'm not that busy. Um, I think the other thing that's really unique about this, so, so this is a cliche, but it's a cliche for a reason. You know, in, in therapy circles, they talk about how <laughs> um, you end up getting you on the couch. And what they mean by that is inevitably, you know, you see X number of people a week. Right. And you will end up attracting a client that is struggling with it with at least one thing that you're struggling with mm. and you can see yourself in them and you can mm -hmm. see yourself in that struggle. Mm -hmm. And that has always been true for me that there's, there's always been somewhere between one and four clients that I'm mm. working with at that time where I'm like, Oh, I get you. Mm -hmm. You don't There's even so know how much I get you. Right. You don't even know girl. You don't know, or, or guy, um, you don't <laughs> get this. And this has been the very first time in my career when I am having a parallel experience with maybe not all, but most of my clients mm. that we are literally in this at the same time together. And obviously they know, <laughs> like, I can't, it, you know, if, if you're going through a divorce or a breakup, you don't know that I am too. Or if I just experienced a loss and you are too, you, you probably don't know that I am too. Right. Right. Um, and, and this is one I, like, I can't, I, w I wouldn't, but I can't, I can't hide that I'm also sheltering in place and I'm also suffering from isolation. And some days I'm suffering more than others. <laughs> um, so, so that, that to me has been the most interesting slash weird part of this for me professionally is you know, where we really are having this very parallel experience at the same time. Um, I think what that has done to me slash for me is I have had to think really very hard about not that I can't fall apart and not that I can't have bad days because I've, I've fallen apart and I've had bad days since this started and I, I, I anticipate I'll have more, but I have felt so moved to walk the walk mm. because I feel, and I have felt this way my entire career, but I, I especially feel it now that I cannot challenge my clients to do things I'm unwilling to do. Mm. So even on my hard days, I, I, not that I'm living for my clients, but I am absolutely thinking about them and remembering that 
I, I have, I have to hold myself to the same, I don't want to say standard, but I don't, I can't think of a better word for it. Um, and I want to encourage myself the same way that I would encourage mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. So I, that was a very long winded response, but no, that, no, no. <laughs> that's what it's been like. Have you found that people respond well to that humanism? Because I know there's kind of like some people that are like, yikes, my therapist is real. Oh no, they're a person. <laughs> and then there's other people that are like, oh cool, you get me because we're connecting and stuff. But not everybody. Have you found that you've been getting the connecting part more so? Um, you know, I'll, I'll say the people that get freaked out by my not being a robot are less likely to ask me how I'm doing they're less likely to really be concerned about like, you're good, right? And the yeah. ones that that really like, that knew I was a human and not a fembot before right. they started working with right. me, um, they get it. When, I, when, when they say like, how are you? And I go, oh yeah, I'm good. <laughs> how are you? And yeah. they go, no, really, how are you? And when I say like, you know, today's an okay day. Yeah. They get that. And that, that is, it's actually kind of nice because, you know, I, at this point, especially at this point, I'm spending more time with some of my clients than I can with some of my friends and family. Mm -hmm. So in that way, it's really humbling. The ones that, that can really tolerate my humanness mm -hmm. are tolerating it and being really lovely and supportive and sincere. And it's, and it's always really, really meaningful and moving when that happens. Aww. Okay. feels I love feelings what I didn't ask a counselor to come onto my stream so I could have feelings what is oh, this thing oh one of them last time actually so I, I'm I'm a big CBT therapist so I often assign homework and one of them last time I almost cried she made me laugh and I just totally didn't see it coming at the end of the session she goes and your homework is and I loved it. It was something really funny. I had told her a dumb joke and I had said it in a terrible Irish accent. And she was like, your homework is by next time you have to come, You by our next session, you have to have told that joke without that horrible accent. And I know that's so dumb, but I, I just, it made me so happy. And I actually did my homework. <laughs> I did my homework. It made me so happy to do that. So, that's so yeah. That's adorable. I mean, oh my God, that's I, adorable. It was so cute. I loved it. I, I, I'm a huge proponent of CBT because it's it's helped me a ton. So that's that's like doubly adorable. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. It, was, oh it was so great. She made my week. She doesn't yeah. know this. She yeah. made my week. Well, yeah. you should tell her next time you talk to her. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, when I tell her that I finished my homework, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right, 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 right. It hasn't been time yet. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Nicole, our time together is up again. <sighs> but you're coming back. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I'll invite myself again. <laughs> uh it's not inviting yourself if I am excited to have you on. Are you kidding? Yay! I didn't even have to move anything. I was just like, oh yeah, like because you're like, I can be due Thursday. And I was like, I don't know when I have guests on Thursday. So psh, wide open. Come on in, come on by. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Aww. don't come on by, but come on by. <laughs> no, never, never don't come on by. Like literally, literally you can knock on my Zoom link and be like, um, is now a good time? <laughs> I'll like stop playing Animal Crossing so we could talk. Like don't, Wait. don't stress about that. Don't awesome. stress. Um, but yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. A lot of people in chat are saying thank you. Uh, thank we always, yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. You're wonderful. Do you want to um, give us your spiel again and tell us about yourself and where people can find you? And are you only licensed in Texas or can people from across the country contact you? How does this work? So I am only licensed in Texas. And okay. fortunately, there isn't a really good like interstate compact. But I, I'm actually hoping i've actually been saying for a couple of years now that i think in the next 10 years we will have some sort of um, national license but that's mm -hmm. another soapbox for me to climb up on mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a good one there, though <laughs> yes there are some states that i explicitly cannot work in oh. um california new york uh florida there are actually some criminal penalties for me to to work with clients in those states wow. um so some states are a little bit more flexy than other states as far as what their board, board rules are so that would be a little bit more of a um 
a, a case specific situation, uh, fortunately, unfortunately. Um, so I'm a licensed professional counselor supervisor and a licensed um, marriage and family therapist supervisor in Texas. Um, I have a private practice. I work with couples and families. I work with uh, trauma survivors. I work with recovering addicts and people who are working through their uh, they're, they're, uh, want to be in recovery from their type A-ness or their perfectionism. I love it. I love it. So, so I just fun. said A-ness. It's wonderful. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you, you. So much fun. Um, okay. So everybody, please stick around. I'll be right back. And we're going to, I'm going to say quickly goodbye to Nicole, but I'll be right back. And uh, y'all are lovely. Mwah! Bye.